Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Let not our enemies exalt over us. Redeem us, O God of Israel, from all our distress. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have given us in St. Francis of Rome a singular model of both married and monastic life, grant us perseverance in your service that in every circumstance of life we may see and follow you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day, day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed through Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles. Neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and called loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he had in hand. Who knows? God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The, God, the word of the Lord. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your, kind, in your goodness. In your greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt 
and of my sin cleanse me. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Heart contrite, you will not spur. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, this generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the queen of the south will rise with with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. The psalm for today's Mass is taken from Psalm 51, and the first reading is taken from the book of Jonah. And St. Augustine, in his commentary on the Psalms, actually links these two together, Psalm 51 and this specific passage from Jonah. In one of the translations of verse 6 of Psalm 51, the psalmist prays, For behold, truth you have loved, uncertain and hidden things of your wisdom you have manifested to me. St. Augustine focuses in on these uncertain and hidden things which God has revealed to the psalmist and relates it to the Ninevites and says, for this uncertainty, the Ninevites repented. After the preaching of Jonah, they said, who knows? God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. St. Augustine said, on an uncertainty did they repent, certain mercy they earned. And so as the psalmist says, uncertain things have been manifested to them. They said, who knows, God may relent and forgive. There is an aspect of uncertainty, but also it is not completely hidden from their vision. And this prayer of the psalmist and of the Ninevites can be our prayer as well during this Lenten season. There is an aspect of uncertainty as to how God will work this Lent. Who knows, through our extra time spent in prayer, the Lord may provide tremendous insight for us. He may convert the hardest of hearts we encounter He may pour out blessings upon us which we have never experienced before. Again, St. Augustine said that on an uncertainty the Ninevites did repent, certain mercy they earned. 
Likewise, since God is faithful, certain mercy we will attain from the Lord if we stay loyal to him during this Lent, if we trust in him, if we show love and mercy to others. It is certain that the Lord will work in our lives and will ultimately show us his mercy. And so as we continue our Lenten observances, may we trust in the mercy of the Lord and like the Ninevites, turn to him wholeheartedly during these weeks ahead. Let us pray. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and religious, may the Lord continue to bless them in their service to him and the church. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in the world, especially in the Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. For community leaders, may God bless them with the humility to serve with integrity and fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering in mind, body, or spirit, may the Lord heal them and draw them closer to his loving heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit continue to help us grow in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have recently died in the light of faith, May the mercy of our loving Father usher them into the fullness of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for Stephen Hillis, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Look kindly, Lord, we pray on the devotion of your people, that those who by self-denial are restrained in body may by the fruit of good works be renewed in mind. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer to you, O Lord, what you have given to be dedicated to your name, that just as for our benefit you make these gifts a sacrament, so you may let them become for us an eternal remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, resurrection, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
All who take refuge in you shall be glad, O Lord, and ever cry out their joy, and you shall dwell among them.
Let us pray. O God, who never ceased to nourish us by your sacrament, grant that the refreshment you give us through it may bring us to unending life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil.